This is Friday, April 6, 2018. We are in West Roxbury, Massachusetts. Yes. And this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. Yeah. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and we are privileged to have with us today Jaime Hipsman. Welcome, Jaime. Thank you. Jaime, may I ask when you were born? Uh, 1925, 1925, January 1925. And where were you born? In the city of Vladava. The Vladava. Mm -hmm. And where is that? That's, that's uh, near, near Helm. Near Helm and near Breslitovsky over the book on the other side, you know. Because uh, that was uh, during the normal time was Poland. And, and that, the river was the border between between Germany and, and Russia, you know. Okay. And what community do you currently live in? Do you live here now in West Roxbury? Yes, yeah. Okay. I live here now. All righty. And are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Uh, I have three sons. Okay. And would you like to mention them? Yeah, that's uh, Michael, the, the oldest one. Uh, Irving is the second one. And Fal is the third one. Do you have grandchildren? Yes, but the grandchildren, the names I... Is, okay. Is, uh, okay. Jaime, tell us about life in Poland before the war. Well, I was a baby at that time. I was a baby, really, and, but uh, I started I started to work for Falkenberg it's around, uh, it's, uh, a year after the war started, because he came later. He didn't come with the, with the army. He came, he came as a, a, a civilian to uh, the Andernemuk was to dry out the, the water, water part. There was a lot of water in the city. Okay, we'll get to Falkenberg in a second. Uh, what did your father do for a living? Oh, he was a baker. Mm -hmm. He worked for somebody. The, mm -hmm. the only time he worked is when the war broke out. We had an oven in our house. So, he, so some people were running from one, state, from one state to another one. So my father baked uh, bread in, uh, in our house, and people came in bo uh, boarded off us. And you had siblings, is that correct? Brothers had, and sisters? Uh, yes, I had, uh, I had two brothers, and I have a sister. We were, we were two brothers and, and, uh, and a sister. Yeah, that's about all. Germany invades Poland in 1939. Say it again. Well, when Germany invaded Poland in 1939, yes. what were you doing? Uh, well, I was, uh, I was learning to become a tailor. Okay, and when did the Germans arrive in your area? When did they arrive? 1939. Mm -hmm. And what did they do to you at first? The Germans? Yes. Well, the Germans, uh, the first the, the, the time when they came, they didn't done no, no, but we were to their, uh, a star David, mm -hmm. and they should. Any any time, you see a German in the city, we had to pick up the head, and be say hi. You know that's all. In the beginning, it was it was nice and quiet. You know, right in the beginning, but the, the later in in nineteen, yeah. 
I remember in 1940, in 42, was it 42 or was it 41? Uh, I think 1941, they sent over some some people from other uh, from other uh, states. They to to the our city. We didn't know why, what, and then they sent in, in 1942, not too far Jewish people from not from not from Poland, not from other 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 Polish states, you know, and there was a, a, a poor a poor life, you know, a poor life. Can you tell us a little more about those days? You say it was a poor life. Does that mean you did not have enough food? No, knocked out. No, it was knocked out. No, we had, we had food enough there. Mm -hmm. We weren't hungry. We weren't hungry, you know. Okay. Hey, uh, Special, my father was in the bakery, mm -hmm. so we had bread and rolls and challah and, and all kinds of things. Okay. When did it start getting worse for it's, your family? It, it starts. It well started uh, around around 40, 42. Mm -hmm. When. Uh, uh, it, it came in some people from out of the, from out of Poland from another city, mm -hmm. and they stayed there, and nobody knew why they sent in some people, you know, from, from the other Jews from the other. I forgot the name of the state. It's to, it's the borders with Poland, you know, and there's uh, this, uh, uh, yeah. Well, it was pretty, pretty, pretty normal, you know, pretty normal. They didn't, they done nothing, but it started in 1942 when they built it up Sobibo. Mm -hmm. So then, in 1942, they sent in a, a lot of people uh, to the city, and uh, at that time, at that time, they, I think they planned to build Sobibo, and uh, and they stayed there, and uh, the, the beginning, in 1942, they, they the people disappeared, the people would, they sent them over to another place, disappeared. And nobody knew why, but after a while, they started to know that they took, they built it up at that time, Sobibo, and they took him the fields to be killed. That was the one. And that was 1942, was a very bad year. And uh, then later they did, they, they killed them, and then when Falkenberg took me out, I was, the city had to give some people to go to Sobibor, but they, we didn't know what Sobibor was going to be at that time in the beginning. So they said that Sobibor is the building, the killing people. And 1942 was a very bad year. And they, I think it was a holiday, or whatever, the Germans came and grabbed whoever they can and they sent them away to Sobibo. And now you can tell us a little more about Mr. Falkenberg. Well, Falkenberg, he, he, was a, he didn't do nothing bad, you know. He, he, he was a good, a good German. He was a civilian German, you know. But uh, he was a good German. He had his family there too, you know. I, I think... Uh, a girl and a boy, yes, you yeah, know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we worked, uh, we worked in 1943 there, and when it started, 
uh, when it started uh, to, to to kill more more people. So, and uh, one time I I. The walk up to walk, they had to walk up in, in this, uh, a, a belt used to ring. And then we knew we had to go out and go to walk. And when it came to 1943, when it came, and uh, when it started humoring, a group went to Falkenberg and asked him, they took away a lot of workers from him, asked him, what can we do now? He said, Listen, I saved you up till now, I cannot save you anymore. I, I want you to go, I want you to go in the forest and go save yourself. And my job is almost done now. So that stopped the work. When they took, took me out from the railway station, it took me, it was in 1942, but in 1943, he killed already people. So that's what it had. In the, some people went in the forest, some people went in other places, you know, and in, it was humorous. You couldn't, couldn't show yourself and, uh, yeah. But I, I, I was b by myself, and my mother was still alive. So uh, one time, I and another boy, he had, his, uh, he had the parents in the city, and I had my mother still alive, because my, because my father died. And, uh, and so I said, in the night time, I'll go, I know where she's hidden there, and because it was, a camp, a build up, a special camp that you cannot go out. And uh, so I said, I'm going to go to the city and see if I can find my mother. So I'll take her with me in a place. Uh, it was a guy, he had a lot of land and he, he, a lot of people worked for him. And so I went there. I went. To, to the city, and uh, while I came to the city, I knew if my mother's alive, she had to be in a hall, in the house, the hiding place. When I came in, I just opened the, the door. I said, Ma, they, some people were there. Not my, some people were there, and, and, and not, and my mother was not there. So the people inside told me that your mother was up till here yesterday. And she said she's gonna go out from there. And gonna go in a village. Okay. And the people asked me in the, vill in the, in the cellar, what can we do now? They were hiding for the Germans. So I told me, here is not a place to hide. The hiding, you have to go to the forest, and the forest is uh, quite a bit, and I couldn't take him with me, because if I'll take him uh, with me, I might, uh, I might sacrifice my life, you know. So, so, so I told him, if you want to survive, you have to go to the forest. I told him, and they, they did went to the forest. Mm -hmm and uh, I started to go back. When I was going back, so I, and the, I, I told the other guy that we're going to meet, going back, we're going to meet in that, in that place. And somehow we keep on going, and somebody from the hiding place uh, screamed, Alt! You know what Alt is. So I, I knew if something is wrong here. So. I turned back, but somehow the other boy fell down and, and I never saw him again. So I saved myself. And all alone by myself, I went back to the place from where I came. And uh, I, I helped there, Taylor there, and the mother was there. 
and she cooked for him, so she cooked for me too, you know. So that's uh, that is how it was. And uh, so then I had to go back from where I came, back back in a place. They, it's, it's like a village, and uh, I stayed there. And then by the end, we had to run in the woods and the race. So, so then when I stayed in the woods for a, a few uh, a few months, so the two Russians, like I told you, came in in the forest, and they said they want to go and join the Russian partisans, and whoever wants whoever wants to volunteer with them. And they go to the to the other side. They welcome. So seven guys of us volunteered. I was one of the seven, and we started up at night time to to travel to the to, to the river. It was two two days and two nights. We traveled only in the night time, and then it was there. Uh, we didn't know where to cross over because some places are deep. So the two Russians, they had guns and uh, they went in in the house. It's houses there near the river. And they took out uh, one the, uh, the boss and he took us over to the other side. The other side to the Russian side. So I went there. And, but they didn't want to keep us there because it was close border, you know, and so and so they said, you keep on going further up, you're going to meet some more partisans, and that's what it happened. So we traveled and traveled and traveled till, till, till we find the place in the forest there, uh, and there were already a lot of partisans. So they took us in, and I stayed there with the partisans till the Germans start to run back. And then, when the Germans run back, it was Rovne, near Rovne. And uh, when the Germans started to come back, we went out of the forest, and we stayed there, and we stayed there, uh, we, we stayed there in the city. But uh, we were free people, you know. Free in the Russian side, not anymore on the German side, not in the Polish side. So that's what it happened. And then they sent us away in the army, in the Russian army. I trained a little bit, but maybe a few months. But then later they asked me how old I am. I think I, 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 I didn't told them the right. I said uh, a, couple, a couple years younger. So they didn't want to keep me in the army, and they sent me in, in a village, and then from one village to another village, from another village in Archangels. I was there, and then we decided we're going to run away from there. That's, we we, we want to run back to Poland, back home, and see what's going on. And that's what it was. So I stayed, uh, they, they sent me in a village, and uh, in that village I stayed a few years and, uh, and later I made this paper and with the paper I came back to Poland. Mm -hmm. Jaime, when did you find out what happened to your family? Oh, I knew right away. The moment I went in the forest, I knew right away. Uh -huh. I, uh, my two brothers, uh, when the war started, they, my, because my, mom, my father died uh, right in the, the first year, so we sent them away in a, in a village to be shepherds, two brothers. And uh, when the Germans came, they, somebody jeeped on them and they took him away and they killed the two brothers. And then they then started up to uh, 1942 was very bad. They came in maybe three times to grab Jews and send them away to Sobibor. That, that was the worst part, you know. 
you had a story before the interview. You told me about the last time you saw your sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. They took away all the workers from Falkenberg, all the workers, and they took us to the railroad station. So uh, while we were staying near the railroad station, so my sister said, Chaim, why don't you see that Falkenberg should take you out and there? Uh, it was a lot of people, uh, a lot of people waiting the train should come and take us to Sobibor. And uh, so I stayed there and that's what my sister said to me, Hi, but don't you see, let's at least one survive in our family. And uh, th that's what it happened. But, uh, he, and then I came back, it was 1940, 40, it was 1942, yeah. So I stayed in work till 1943, and from then on it was a Juden rain. So Juden rain means if you find a Jew, kill him and forget about it. That's all. And when I came back, I came back from the Russian side, my mother's sister survived. So I had the house where they come in. But we didn't stay long in the city. We decided we, this is not our place anymore. So we took off <coughs> and we were on the way to, fight, to go into some other, other countries. And that's, uh, that's so we, I remember I was in Berlin, I, I, I was there in a, in a place where we tr tried to come to Germany. We didn't want to stay in Poland anymore. And uh, I, I was, I was in, in, in Germany, and in Germany the, 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 the American consulate was there. And we came to the consulate and said we want to immigrate, we want to so immigrate and uh, immigrate to Kansas City, Missouri. Did you have relatives in Kansas City? What? Did you have relatives in Kansas City? No, I didn't have no relative. No, it's from the Jewish organization. Uh huh. I don't know. I don't know what you call them. We stayed there maybe about half a year, and then when they, my wife's parents came to Boston, so she said she wants to come and join the family. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful place, you know. They treated us good, you know. And uh, I know my older son was born at that time. He was born in Germany, but uh, we took him to Kansas City to, you know, my older son, Michael. Mm -hmm. I understand your wife is also a Holocaust survivor. Yes, yeah. She survived in the Holocaust with the parents, mm -hmm. yeah. But her father died in the Holocaust, mm -hmm. in the forest. Mm -hmm. He took sick, he was no doctor, and uh, that's where he died. And they, had to, they, they didn't have it out to bury him. So they, with the hands, he made a hole mm -hmm. and, they, and they put him in there. But later on, they wanted to see how it is there. So they said that, uh, that the animals felt that something is there mm -hmm. to eat them up. The, the animals eat them up, and, and that, that's uh, the, way, the way it was then. So now you and your wife, yeah, and other members of your family, and now in Boston. You're you're living in Boston now. Yeah. Where, and you have a nice son. The first of three. Uh, did you continue work as a tailor? Uh, yes, I did work as a tailor. Okay. How long did you work as a tailor? Well, listen, I gave up my store uh, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. I worked there and the people liked me and I did a good job, you know, and uh, I figure I have enough uh, and I sold it and, and uh, I didn't want to work anymore. I made a little bit of money there, 
uh, of course, I walked out from here from the dark till the night. I was in the store, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and I came back and and uh, that was the end. You know, I had to take care of the children, you know, and uh, I made good in the store. I made a, a, I made a, quite a bit uh, of money. So I figure I have enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll do something else. Whatever, you never know. So Jaime, let's get back to Mr. Falkenberg. What happened to him? Well, I really don't know what happened to him. I had to go back to to Germany because he he was not a he. he, he he came from from Germany, and so he had, I, I, I don't know, okay. I don't know. Well, I understand that because he helped save yeah. some, quite a few Jewish people, yeah. uh, he was sent to a camp himself. Yeah, I heard somebody told me about Falkenberg, uh -huh. because the, the, what the Germans did to him is just a shame. He was a, he was a good German, he was, you know. So. So that, what can I just say? And what did happen? How he went back and whatever. But he was a good guy. He didn't do did no harm to nobody. He didn't do nothing to me. He had to do the job and do the work. He had to dig some holes uh, that the water should go in one place, going in the book. The, all the water should go in, in the book, you know, mm -hmm. from, from the city. Uh, Jaime, you've also have spent some time talking to groups about the Holocaust. Yes, uh -huh. I, I, I spoke a lot. I spoke, I spoke in churches, uh -huh. and uh, uh, and I spoke in the, in the temples, you know, and I spoke, I spoke for for, for kids. The black kids, I spoke, not too far from here, you know. And uh, that's about all. I told them all my story. Mm -hmm. Jaime, how important it is for people to remember the Holocaust? Well, well, some people is still crazy about. Some people saying that it's never happened, mm -hmm. but I know it, what it did happen. What did happen to my family? that the Germans killed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jaime, uh, do you want to say something about the uh, Museum of World War II? World War II? The, um, well, the International Museum of World War II, which also has a Holocaust exhibit. I, I've been, the Holocaust in, in Washington, mm -hmm. I've been there, and they, they sent Somebody, uh, a actor, uh -huh. a Jewish actor, made went around to the Holocaust survivors and took in uh, asked questions, everything. This I, I know it happened, you know. So that's about uh, that's about all, all you know. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, I, I don't know what I can say. Well, listen, I can tell you about, uh, I told you about uh, the people were running. The Germans came at night time and killed 50 people and I didn't went in the forest. I went in the, uh, in the building to, to sleep over by the horses and cows for there and I survived there, you know. Jaime, is there anything else you would like to say? Well, well, I was a lucky guy, you know. A, a lucky guy, but I survived. Mm -hmm. I went through a lot, you know. But then in Russia, I spent, uh, I think, four years there. The war was still going on. Three, four years I spent in Russia. And uh, I like the people, you know. I like the people. They didn't do no harm to me. Whenever I wanted something, 
in the village, it's bad cows and this. I went to the boss and I told him to give me uh, some milk or sour cream. So they gave me a, a, a paper and I went and I collected. You know. I, I cannot say anything bad about the Russians. The Russians, it's a poor country, so it was not a rich country. And we were living close together. I had a lot of, I mean, I, uh, I went out with a lot of gills, you know, and we used to dead ends there. And, oh yes, they, they, they used to cook for the old village. They used to cook for food, you know. I went there and ate there in a restaurant. It's, it's like, it was a restaurant. And any time in the morning you go there, at night I go there. So, well, I found that, I found that in Russia, poor people and they nice people. You can, they're not all rich people, you know. There are few rich people, but not too much. I don't know them. I didn't get in touch with them, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's, well, what can I say? Say about Russia? They were nice people and they were poor people. So that's all. Well, Jaime Hipsman, we thank you so much well, for taking part in okay. the Native Veterans Oral History yes, Project. And I, I tried my best mm -hmm. to be safe and to survive. You know, and I tried to save my mother, I couldn't do it. And uh, my two brothers just got killed in the village. And my sister told me to uh, let at least once, once survive in our family. Uh, why don't you see the Falkenberg should, should take you out from here? Uh, okay, and that's what it was. That's all that I can tell you. Okay. Well, that certainly is plenty. I mean, we want to thank you once again for taking part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project.